topic is efficacy, feasibility, and safety of photodynamics and use type of photo drainage of abdominal fluid collections. I'm Dr. Aishwarya and Vidwal, junior resident from Kasturba Medical College, Mangalore. So my aim of the study was to evaluate the efficacy, feasibility, and safety of percutaneous catheter drainage of abdominal fluid collections, and to also compare it with the percutaneous catheter uh, with the traditional methods like intermediate plain needle aspiration or open surgical drainage wherever possible, to also assess the reasons for failure and complications of the, this modality, and also to conclude the safest access pathway determining imaging modality to site of fluid collections. So we did this, conducted the study in the Department of Radio Diagnosis, KMC Hospitals, Atawar, and Ambedka Circles, and the District Manlock Hospital, Manglock. We conducted the study over a period of two years, and those patients who were diagnosed to have fluid filled ca cavity in abdomen who were referred from clinician were included in the study. Sample size was around 51. So those patients who recovered very well on intermittent needle aspiration were excluded from the study. And uh, we did not conduct the study or we did not do the procedure in patients with severely deranged or the coagulation profile. And also in those patients whom uh, safest possible access pathway was not determined. So initially we uh, went about with the pre-procedural preparation, written informed consent and um, coagulation profile. Patient was placed in a convenient suitable position and uh, under local anesthesia, a needle aspiration was performed as an initial step until no further fluid was aspirated. If the patient recovered, if there was complete collapse of cavity uh, on even on repeat imaging that was on day three or after 72 hours, the, those patients were not included in the study. But however, if um, needle aspiration followed by catheter insertion was done in the same sitting or it was done after an interval gap of three days, it was considered in the study. We did use a direct puncture technique to introduce the catheter into the collection. And um, after the range of catheter, the cavity was completely aspirated. Repeat imaging on day three was done. Further complications and recovery were assessed based on the clinical outcome and recovery. Surgical drainage was assessed if it was needed or not. So these are the parts of technical catheterization. You can see the needle protection sheet, puncture needle. This is the connector. This is the catheter and the outer sheath. So initial um, imaging was done before the procedure. Then uh, direct puncture needle technique is used and the catheter is puncture needle is withdrawn while the catheter is pushed forward. And then you can see this needle was used, uh, aspirated, uh, just to initiate the free fluid uh, drainage. And then it was connected to a euro bag via connector. Then post uh, pigtail catheterization uh, imaging was obtained to uh, check if the catheter is in place and then secured, the catheter was secured. Then this is the collection of drainage bag and then the samples were forwarded to laboratory for diagnostic evaluation. And at the time of discharge, we divided the patients into three groups. Group A, which included both the modalities in the same setting, and group B after an interval gap, and group C, who needed uh, open surgical drainage. So this was a performer we used, to, used on our study, and suitable imaging modality or the collect catheter was completely operator dependent based on the location, the size, and the characteristic, uh, characteristics of the fluid collection, if it was uh, aseptated, echogenic, or dense collection with the debris or not. Then outcome of imaging uh, was outcome on imaging was defined on the basis of success and failure. Like success uh, was defined if there was a complete collapse of the cavity or if the uh, volume of the fluid collection was reduced by 75% or more, we determined it, we uh, defined it as adequate drainage. Otherwise, we call it failure. If there was reaccumulation, it was also called as failure. This is a few of the cases which we included in our study. This is the first case for a three-year-old child who was diagnosed with retroperitoneal rhabdomyoma. He had a large pelvic mass which encased bilateral ureters causing gross hydroeurythronephrosis. So we did percutaneous catheter nephrostomy in this case and the uh, patient had a satisfactory relief of dilated calicid system. And this, there was another patient with uh, severe abdominal pain and fevers in 15 days. He also had a picture of amylase and lipase which was raised so on imaging, we have it was uh, found to be having a pancreatitis, and uh, he also had a, a which had a peripancreatic and a perisplenic pseudocyst. So this was again recovered on pigtail catheterization. So negative it was for malignancy, however, but it was infective collection. Then another case with acute necrotizing pancreatitis, which is a large collection, which is almost going down to a left iliac fossa. We put in the catheter there, but then later uh, there is somehow dislodged. So we had to replace the catheter. While we replaced the catheter, initially we used 8.5 French, then we upsized it to 10 French, then we it was better uh, positioned and uh, it was very well drained. 
So this is another experimental lab uh, study which we did in the same patient where it was a, a case of M5 symmetrous necrotizing pancreatitis. As you can see, multiple air locules and it was a large collection as well. So we put in two catheters by our peritoneal one and the other one was retroperitoneal approach. So we irrigated NS in the normal saline in one of the catheters and we used to we use other catheter to drain the uh, collection. That way, all the large air locules and the debris which was just sedimented, all of them cleared out very well. So the patient did not go for surgery, rather recovered very well just by pictorial catheterization. So this is another case with Crohn's abscess which needed immediate intervention. So however, they went about doing resection mastomasis in this case, which was, but however, deferred for a longer time because patient was not so stable in the beginning, but pictorial catheterization definitely helped the patient recover from the abscess. So another case where ripple surgery was done, pancreatic odiotectomy was done, where you can see the post-op collection was there, which was again very well drained on pictorial catheterization. So these are the results of my study with sex distribution, age, and the category size. So mostly your size was 12 French, followed by 10 and 8.5. Mostly purulent fluids was seen, and then serous, serosinolus, hemorrhagic, and various. So complications we classified as major and minor. Most of the patients had pain um, at the site of catheter insertion, which was classified as pain or uh, minor, and followed by no complications in few of them. And some of them also had perinephric hematomas and preceptral hematomas. And one of the patients had blockage or dislodgement of catheter. Then this is the success and failure def definitions of groups, both the groups. However, there's no significant difference in the, both the categorized group distribution. So we concluded that there's no much of a difference in both the groups in, be it in the same setting, we insert catheter or we delay it after a period of three days because, but however, we in our study, we had few limitations. We couldn't compare, have a direct comparison between the open surgical drainage in all the cases. But wherever possible, we did compare, and mostly we could not also have a separate uh, or an analysis of different sizes of catheter to be used in the same patient. So we conclude that, uh, however, the two groups will not show any much difference. So how only uh, intermittent radial aspiration would, as an initial step, would help in easy and free drainage of the fluid. Guiding it also helps in guiding the access pathway of the catheter placement and collection of the uncontaminated samples for laboratory evaluation. Accesses need immediate interven intervention. So we did, we have, we did in our study, we did do catheterization and uh, radial aspiration in the same setting. Uh, and a uh, few of the complications were reported, but however, they're very minor and very low rate. So we conclude that percutaneous catheter drainage was very effective in draining various types of fluid collection, most commonly purinant and serous. So the time saved during this procedure and under the guidance of imaging modality will make the, this procedure a very uh, preferred treatment modality. And uh, intermittent needle aspiration, when done as a first step, and if it's helpful in delaying the percutaneous catheter drainage, then it is very much uh, needed. Thank you.